This is one of my favorite screenwriting books of all time. I've explained on this channel why that is, and you should check it out. Recently, a dream came true, and I had the privilege of speaking with the author, Christopher Vogler, about the book, but also about the history behind it. Earlier this year, he celebrated the 25th anniversary of the publication. As this came shortly after the passing of publisher Michael Wiese, I took the opportunity to speak with Vogler about both Michael Wiese and the book, The Writer's Journey. I'll publish the video as soon as I'm happy with the edit, but meanwhile, here is a five minute teaser. My first question to Vogler was, how did the book come about? Here's the, the setup. I had uh, composed my idea, which is about the hero's journey based on the work of Joseph Campbell. And I took uh, his ideas about this sort of inner structure of uh, fairy tales and uh, myths and uh, said, this is good for the movie business. And I was working at uh, Disney and other studios at that time. And uh, I said, this is commercial. This is uh, something uh, quite useful and also quite useful in people's lives. So I uh, wrote a proposal, as one does for a, a book, and I shopped it around and got an agent and did all the things one does uh, and went to New York with it and just got nowhere. Uh, that People said it's too Hollywood, it's too California, it's uh, too, you know, dreamy, exotic, or we already have Campbell books. There were a million reasons. But then uh, the story is a friend of mine who uh, was a very talkative guy, happened to be sitting next to Michael Wheezy. And uh, my uh, Gabby friend uh, heard about this guy being a publisher who was just getting into uh, self-help books really for independent filmmakers. So I, I uh, went to meet him uh, and uh, was very sort of impressed by this guy because uh, he appeared uh, a little bit larger than life. He was a tall guy uh, and there was something exotic about him and I couldn't place it. And the other thing about him that I kind of got right away was uh, this is a guy who's going to stick by his products and he's going to keep them in print. And he sort of made me that promise. And uh, that was certainly the case. Whereas in the rest of the publishing world, the usual way is that they push it out often in September or around Christmas uh, to sell a lot of books. And then they wait and see. And if it sells a lot, they might print it again. But most of the time they don't. And that's the end of it. It just comes out one flash and it's over. In the book, Michael recounts the anecdote, uh, and I wanted to know from you whether it's real or apocryphal, where you would have left the memo of the the not the, you know the the core the seed of your book on a printer at Disney while you were working there. Is that is that? True? Uh, I noticed myself in the studio, and I think Michael appreciated this way of uh, this kind of guerrilla way of uh, of operating. He was a guerrilla filmmaker. In the days of Xerox machines, um, it was a good idea to go by the Xerox room and lift up the, the pad and, and see, did anybody leave anything on the deck? Because sometimes they would. They would be in a hurry to copy a memo or a letter or something, and they'd get the copies out and then run off and leave the original on the glass. So I sort of back engineered it. And I said, I wonder what would happen if I left my memo on the glass on purpose. And somebody did come along, found it, and actually plagiarized it. Uh, they they took the cover off and said, this is a great idea. Uh, this was, by the way, a short memo about seven pages long that I wrote in the style of Disney at that time. That This is how the management communicated through memos. And um, I copied the uh, the best memo writer, which was Jeffrey Katzenberg, the head of production at that time, and uh, uh, wrote in, in his style. But somebody, a junior executive, found this and put his name on it and submitted it up the chain. And it eventually came to Jeffrey Katzenberg. He had raved about it. And, and uh, I think he read Campbell's book, the hero with the thousand faces over the Christmas holidays. And he came back and he said, this is really good. And I did something uncharacteristic for me. And I think Michael was sympathetic with me in, in this. 
um, I claimed credit for it. And I went way outside the box of my job, which was I was supposed to read the scripts and write reports and be silent and not interact with the executives. But um, I wrote a letter to Katzenberg and said, wait a minute, I wrote that memo that you were talking about, and I want more involvement in the company. And uh, to my amazement, he called me instantly. As soon as he read the letter, he called me and said, I have a place for you in animation. That's where you should be. I get it. I get that you wrote the thing, and I, I see that you you have a handle on this. And where we need you is in animation. And they just happened to be uh, in the middle of developing what eventually became The Lion King. They say that plagiarism is the highest form of praise, right? So That's how I took it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>